It's a very special honor and a privilege to be here to join you in presenting the book Kumui, The Defender of the Faith. And we've heard already how difficult it was to persuade Pastor W.F. Kumui that writing a book about him is a good idea. I can imagine what all of our conspirators went through just uh, to persuade him that just to persuade him that this book is a good idea. The reason that we're so sure that it would have been a very difficult enterprise convincing him is because of that innate resistance of humble men to any form of adulation or celebration of personal success. And this is especially so for a servant of God who knows more than anyone else that all glory must go to God for the enablement, the opportunity, and indeed the results of ministry. After all, without him, we can do nothing. But there's another side to the issue. Every person, especially those who succeed in their endeavors, whatever those endeavors may, may be, owe society three sound doctrine to rebuke us and to instruct us unto righteousness. Their stories continue today and the baton has been handed over to our own generation. This Pentecost tax is one that we must all pay. It's one that men and women who preach the gospel must pay. It is not about personal reflections. It is not about personal aggrandizement. They owe an obligation. It is that obligation that has produced the book of Acts. So the book Kumui, the defender of the faith, begins just begins the work of, of discharging that tax. The obligation, that obligation to tell the story of the missionary journey. And this book tells the story of the incredible work of the Holy Spirit in the life of Pastor W.F. Kumui and his ministry. How by his grace, he not only preached and continues to preach holiness to a whole generation, but lived and lives that whole life of holiness himself every day. The book tells the story of how the Holy Spirit worked miracles through him and how from a Bible study group of 15 members in 1973, the ministry grew to what is now the Deeper Life Bible Church. At one point with 120,000 members, and I don't know how many now, making it at that time the third largest single congregation in the world and is now firmly established in several countries of the world. How by the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God, Pastor Kumui has kept faith with the Great Commission, preaching the gospel to all persons without compromise or embellishment, keeping his eyes and focus on the Lord Jesus and keeping faith with the words of that deeper life anthem Jesus is our only message Jesus all our thens shall be we will lift up Jesus forever Jesus only will we see end of quote so this is not really a book about Pastor Kumui it is about the grace and mercies of God in the life of his servant and how by his mercies his servant Kumui has in the words of the scriptures, and these scriptures are said to be on the backdrop of every deeper life pulpit all over the world, how he's fulfilling the instruction, and I quote, to earthy and indeed the results of ministry. After all, without him, we can do nothing. But there's another side to the issue. Every person, especially those who succeed in their endeavors, whatever those endeavors may, may be, owe society three taxes, three forms of tax. The first is income tax, personal income tax. And if you own a company, corporation tax or company tax. The second is a social tax. Another name for that is philanthropy. The obligation of the wealthy 
or simply those who have to give back to society or to give to those who do not have. The third tax is a civic tax, a civic tax. The obligation of the successful to write their stories, to share the histories of the phenomena that they have become in order to instruct, to admonish, and to inspire the present and the future. But for the successful preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a fourth tax. This is the Pentecost tax. The Pentecost, Pentecost tax. The obligation of men and women since the day of Pentecost, the day described in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to preach the gospel, to tell the story of their missionary journeys, the miracles, the signs and wonders that God had wrought through their, throughout their journeys in ministry, the deprivations, the fastings and the persecutions, the victories and the failures, the mountains and the valleys. This is the Pentecost tax, the tax to tell what you have gone through in ministry. And but for that responsibility, and this is a huge responsibility, the saints before us discharge that responsibility. So we are beneficiaries of the acts of the apostles, the stories of the men and women who carried the gospel first to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. Their stories have encouraged generations of Christians since their recorded experiences may seem to make them stars. But they are meant to instruct us in adherence to sound doctrine, to rebuke us and to instruct us and keeping faith with the words of that deeper life anthem. Jesus is our only message. Jesus, all our events shall be. We will lift up Jesus forever. Jesus only will we see end of quote. So this is not really a book about Pastor Kumui. It is about the grace and mercies of God in the life of his servant and how by his mercies his servant Kumui has in the words of the scriptures and these scriptures are said to be on the backdrop of every deeper life pulpit all over the world. How he's fulfilling the instruction and I quote to earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Jude 1, 3. The Pentecost tax is never fully discharged. While the man of God is alive, the acts of this apostle must be written. So we commend all those who have taken on the task of discharging that obligation, especially the joint authors of the book, Banji or Jewale, Shegun Babatokwe, Tunde Okwebi, and the editorial board led by Pastor Philip Olui, and including Steve Obidi, Andrew Umaru, and Uriel Moma. Let me inform them that the mission has only just begun. And if the Lord tarries, there is still a very long way to go. I've had an opportunity to read the book, and every page of it is certainly worth reading, and worth reading more than once. I recommend it to all. Once again, we thank God for the life and service of Pastor Kumui. God bless you all. Thank you.